Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Hasura's permission system to perform data validations. I'm taking the example of Slack data model and uh, I'm going to explain how, how to create permission checks to validate data before inserting or updating, right? So let's first look at the Slack data model. Um, this is a simplified version. Um, we have users, uh, we have workspaces in Slack and workspaces can have channels, multiple channels and uh, each workspace will have its own set of members and channel can have threads and uh, there will be messages in threads, right? Roughly, we want to validate data that goes into uh, some of these tables. So, for example, uh, we need to decide who can insert into the workspace table or who can create a channel, who can create a channel thread and the message and so on, right? We already know the conditions that are involved in setting this up. For example, any authenticated user can create a workspace. Uh, anybody can create a channel who is part of the workspace or any workspace admin or a workspace owner can create a channel and anybody in the channel can actually create threads and messages, right? So we know these preset conditions that are required and we are going to declaratively configure these permissions in Hasra, right? Let's jump to Hasra console. Uh, I already have the tables here. And I'm going to start with the first example of uh, creating a workspace, right? So in Hasura, you have role-based access control where you define uh, a role and you give permissions uh, for each operation uh, per role. So I'll go to permissions tab and you can see that the operations are listed. You have insert, select, update and delete. Uh, they, they are the operations and you can list out multiple roles and define uh, permissions granularly, right? So we have a default admin permission who has access to everything. But in this case, we need to define a new role. Uh, let's say the role is user. Uh, now we need to define permissions for insert and update operation to see uh, who can actually do this and uh, what kind of uh, configuration is required to this declaratively, right? So I'm going to click on insert edit and I'm going to say a custom check for this permission. And I'm going to say, so the requirement is uh, who can create a workspace, right? The workspace can be created by somebody who is just logged in, right? In Hasra's context, we can use session variables to configure this. So I'm going to say um, the owner ID uh, column, which is part of the workspace, uh, has to equal to the session variable accessor user ID. Session variables are just key value pairs that are automatically sent from the authentication service. Um, for example, if you've configured your JSON uh, web token, then uh, the variables will come in from the claims or uh, you can also send in headers uh, with the prefix X has, uh, right? So anybody who's trying to insert into the workspace table, uh, the owner ID uh, has to equal to the user who's just uh, trying to insert it, right? In this way, we ensure that uh, we are just assigning the owner of the workspace to the right user who is basically logged in and trying to insert this, right? And uh, in the column permissions, we can say uh, we let the user to insert the name of the workspace and also the URL slug of the workspace. And that should be enough, right? Um, we don't want the user to set the owner ID uh, manually. Uh, we just want to automate this process, right? Uh, because otherwise what would happen is the user will be able to send in a different owner ID, right? Uh, which is not validated, right? So I'm going to say uh, in column presets. So column presets allows you to configure some uh, session variables or static values which can be filled in automatically uh, as part of the mutation, right? Um, so I'm going to say uh, the owner ID, right? Uh, the owner ID will be coming from the session variable automatically. And I'll say XSRI user ID is a session variable from which you can take the value of the owner ID, right? So let's say if the XSRI user ID is one, 
I would uh, basically just need to insert the name and the URL slug and the owner ID value one will be automatically taken from the session variable, right? So I'm gonna click on save permissions and that's mostly it from my permission for uh, workspace insert. And the same permission system is applicable for an update. Here we say that the owner ID has to be equal to the accessor user ID. So only the owner who is only the owner of the workspace uh, is supposed to uh, edit the workspace details, right? And uh, they, they are also supposed to edit only the name and the URL slug and probably even the updated time of the workspace, right? And uh, here we don't need column presets because the owner ID is already set and we, we are not trying to update that value anymore, right? So I can click on save permissions and that's it about the insert and update permissions, right? So here we have done validations to see if the user is uh, the logged in user who is setting the owner ID and, and we are also automatically applying the owner ID value from the session variable so that the user who is trying to insert cannot manually give in some values, right? This way we can prevent uh, any custom code to be written for this kind of a data validation. And that's why column presets are powerful in that context, right? So my next example uh, will be about inserting a channel. So we have uh, a few columns in channel, uh, the name, if it's public or which workspace it belongs to and who created it, right? Now the condition for creating a channel uh, is that you need to be part of a workspace uh, and also you need to be an admin or an owner of the workspace, right? So we have a table called workspace user type where we have the type as admin, owner and member, right? Um, so a workspace member can be either of these three types um, and for, for someone to create a channel, they need to be either the admin or the owner and that's how we will allow them to create a channel, right? So I'm gonna to go to channel uh, in the permissions. Uh, we have this user role already defined. I'm going to click on insert and in my custom check, I'm going to say, so to make multiple conditions uh, and to do that, I'm going to make use of this Boolean expression called underscore and. Here I'll be able to give an array of uh, conditions. So the first validation is that the user who's creating the channel has to be part of the workspace, right? So I'm going to say uh, workspace and workspace members and inside workspace members, I'm going to say the user ID equal to the accessor user ID, right? So by this condition, I mean that the channel has a relationship called workspace. Uh, a channel uh, belongs to a particular workspace, right? And workspace has members and uh, in the workspace members, you have a user ID which has a value called accessor user ID, right? And the second condition, which is the more important condition, is to see if the workspace member, uh, which the user is claiming to be, uh, also is the admin or the owner of the workspace, right? So that, that, so that they have the right privileges to create a channel, right? And uh, the second condition will be similar where I'm gonna say workspace and workspace members. And inside workspace members, I'm gonna say user type. Uh, we have this workspace user type uh, relationship, right? And uh, I'm gonna say type. So it uh, we need uh, to check if the type of the user is either an admin or an owner both of them can actually create a channel, right? So I'm gonna say uh, underscore in. So in uh, in this, I'm going to give uh, two values, which will be admin and uh, owner. So with these two conditions, uh, if any, any of these two uh, values match uh, for the user type, uh, the insert will be allowed to perform, right? And uh, in the insert permission columns, I'm going to give access to the name. I'm going to give access to whether it's a public channel and the workspace ID, right? And the value for created by can come in automatically from the column presets because we don't want them to manually give in a value. 
in this case i'm going to say created by uh, will come from a session variable which will be x as to the user id right very similar to the previous example that we defined uh, for the workspace permissions right so i'm going to click on save permissions and uh, we are done with the insert permission for channel uh, the update permission is, uh, is is mostly the same except that we'll probably be changing which columns they'll be able to modify uh, they can probably change channel uh, to a private one to, to modify this column and uh, yeah we don't need to allow access to any other column so we can save uh, permissions right and finally uh, another uh, example for validation is for channel threads right uh, users belong to channel and uh, users can create uh, channel threads and which is basically a message thread right uh, a thread can have messages so the idea is that the permission for channel thread is that if a user belongs to a particular channel they'll be able to create a thread right so I want to say uh, in insert permission I want to do a custom check to check if the user who's trying to do an insert actually belongs to this channel right so I'm going to say channel and in channel members if the user ID is equal to the access user ID whoever is logged in right so in this way uh, we are restricting creation of cha uh, channel threads to only the members of the channel right uh, and that's what that's the only condition we care about right now right um, so I'm going to set uh, some columns for permissions i'm going to give the channel id for the channel thread and uh, that's it finally uh, for channel thread message uh, i need to set up insert permissions right here i'm going to say the same custom check there's one more level of uh, nesting here involved so i'm going to say channel thread first because channel thread message will have a relationship to channel thread and from there I'll traverse through the channel and from channel I'll traverse through the channel members and obviously here I'm going to see the user ID of the channel member has to be equal to the XFSA user ID so by this expression what we are saying is uh, anybody who can create a channel thread message has to belong to the list of channel members of a particular channel right and that's the only condition that we care about and uh, in the list of columns I can give access to the channel thread ID the message of the channel and in column presets I am going to uh, give access to the user ID right which means that the user ID can be automatically templated from the session variable again uh, so that we don't need to allow manual uh, access to these particular columns like user ID right I'm going to click on save permissions and we are done with setting up data validations for the tables um, we can see that how powerful uh, the role based access control system is without writing any code uh, we have declaratively configured some validations right uh, you might have also noticed that uh, we were able to uh, configure permissions uh, which traverse through different relationships right for example the channel uh, table right uh, to have a permission we traverse through multiple uh, relationships right so this kind of powerful configuration uh, lets you skip a lot of boilerplate code that you would have written for uh, these conditional checks right this is just one example of setting up permissions uh, I'll catch up with you on a different video with a different example about setting more complex permissions